You've just come out of a meeting with your boss. You have steam coming out of your ears. You're mad. You want to do a Joanna from Office Space circa 1999 and put your middle finger up and quit. Okay, there it is. I hate this job. Maybe you're at a crossroads deciding whether you should take that role you were headhunted for last week. Maybe Monday morning meetings are tedious lately. Intrinsic motivation has left the building. You're stressed, anxious, and negative. Something is off and something needs to change. Are you uncertain whether you should quit or if you should quit? Then this video is for you. Hello, my fellow leaders. It's me, Maria Vorostovsky. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader podcast, where you can expect to see and hear weekly conversations with founders, CEOs, and authors about their journey to the top, sprinkled with an executive headhunter strategies on how you can transform your career and become a better leader yourself. Subscribe and follow me for more career tips like these. Disclaimer, this video is not about how long you should stay in your job before you quit. This is not headhunter's tips on how to get promoted and it's not about encouraging you to quit. It is, however, about reflecting on what is important to you to get you unstuck from this limbo. Before we get into it, let's dispel a little myth. The old age saying that winners never quit and quitters never win. Quitting has been portrayed as something negative. Just look at the use of language giving up, chucking it, abandoning, terminating. Quitting has become synonymous with failure and not quitting with success. But this couldn't be further from the truth. In her book, Quit, The Power of Knowing When to Walk Away, Annie Duke argues that quitting is a critical decision-making tool. And I quote, success does not lie in sticking to things. It lies in picking the right thing to stick to and quitting the rest. Even Angela Duckworth, who famously defined grit as passion and perseverance for long-term goals, didn't say, don't quit. You need to try many things before deciding to stick with something. This means you'll need to do a lot of quitting. Yes, we need to grit, but we also need to know what we are gritting for. And focusing on never quitting often means you don't attempt difficult projects in the first place. So how should you go about deciding whether to stay in or leave your job? Let's look at the elements that have been found to make a job fulfilling. And spoiler alert, it's not the money. I call these the five C's. I've put together a free quiz for you, which I'll link down in the comments. The first C is clarity. Do you know what you need to do to be successful in your role? There needs to be some level of clarity and predictability that you're comfortable with. And for this person, this can be different. Those who thrive in startups, for example, are usually more comfortable with chaos and less clarity. But even in the earlier stages of startups, it is still important to know what you're meant to do. So how clear is your role? The second is challenge. How hard is your job? Does it match your strengths? Is it engaging? Does it stretch you just beyond your capabilities and comfort zone? If it's too little challenge, the role is dull and not motivating. And if it's too much challenge, it's very stressful and you feel overwhelmed and never feel like you can come up for air. Like the Goldilocks standard, it needs to be just right so you feel like you're in flow. The third C is control. Nir Ayal, author of Hooked and Indistractable, once said to me on this podcast that when you work in a place with high expectations and low control, that is the definition of toxic culture, which leads to anxiety and depression. Do you have agency and autonomy in your role? How much influence do you have over your day to day, over what you do, where you work, and who you work with? American psychologist Martin E. P. Seligman was famous for conceptualizing the theory of learned helplessness, which showed that when dogs were in stressful situations which they could not control, they just simply gave up trying. I mean, essentially, they became depressed. Is that how you feel in your own? 
Think about how much control you have over your work. The fourth is career growth. What opportunities for growth are there for you? And this doesn't have to mean a promotion. It could be a new project that develops your skills. What resources are available to you? What courses can your company offer you? Perhaps you're in a sales function and you want to have a go at marketing. Can you make the transition internally? Growth and learning can take many forms. Is it clear to you how you can grow and progress? The fifth and arguably the most important is connection to your boss and colleagues or culture. Recently on the show, I spoke with Lou Adler, one of the top headhunters in the world. And Lou said that the very few placements that he's made that didn't work out were mainly due to the broken relationship with a hiring manager. It is your boss who determines the dominant culture. So what is your boss like? Are they supportive? Do they show you that they care about your success and growth? If not, have a think about who was the boss in your career under whom you have thrived. Somebody who was directly responsible for your success. What did they do differently? The relationship with your boss will directly impact your career. So get that right. I mean, don't get me wrong. Your colleagues are also very important. In fact, working with amazing colleagues can often inoculate you from the effects of bad boss. But ignore that relationship at your peril. As well as the five C's, the best jobs also have an absence of bad things. So for example, a long commute you find stressful, unfair pay, very long hours that interfere with your life, and job insecurity. And if you want a really amazing job, you will want it to align with your purpose, a role that helps to solve a genuine problem in the world that you feel really passionate about. But this ikigai is a topic for another day. Let me know what your score is from the quiz I've linked in the comments. Now that you have some clarity about your role, how do you decide whether you should stay or if you should leave? If you scored low on some of the five C's, this doesn't necessarily mean the end. Not every area has to be 100%. If the role is not clear, what will give you more clarity? Can you speak with your boss to set clearer expectations? If the role is too easy, should you put up your hand for a more complex project? And if too difficult, what can you say no to? Or can you ask your colleagues for help? If there is little control, what aspects of your role could you do something about? Could you leave earlier? Could you work from home? Could you reprioritize so that you can focus on the most important things? What can your colleagues support you with? If it's really overwhelming, can you take a break or even take a holiday? And if there is a lack of growth, what courses can your company provide for you? What courses can you find for yourself? Can you move departments? And finally, if it's a difficult boss, what have you tried to help nurture this relationship? What about their communication triggers you? Perhaps it's an issue you're afraid to raise. Going through this process might make you realize, like Bridget Jones did, that your boss is intolerable and you just need to resign gracefully. Frankly, I'd rather have a job wiping Saddam Hussein's ass. In any case, focusing on the areas that you can control will help to determine if your job is worth written for. Jay Shetty, in his recent book, Eight Rules of Love, said, keep a balanced view of struggle. There's bound to be some struggle at all levels of the pyramid, but struggling doesn't have to be your entire identity. And if you need some one-on-one -on -one career coaching, reach out to me. I'll leave my contact details in the comments. And if you're still with me and are enjoying this video, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel so I can continue creating these free career tips for you. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.